Pickaholics. I have today a challenge lock from Ashley Gavin. This one is called a Rough Ass, and this is number 17. It's in a GG. Always a fun keyway. I have picked this a couple times now because uh, it was a lot of fun. First time I picked it took, I think it was about 50 minutes in total. Uh, and then I picked it again just to see. Key's a little rough, but it works. And this is the key. Pretty nasty bidding for a GG. So let's see what happens here. Actually, I'm going to bring this in just a little bit closer. And a little bit over this. There we go. How's that look? That looks pretty good. We have to see the marks. And everything else as we go through. All set. Starting. There's that one. Once you know this lock, it's not too hard. Let's see if that's that last pin. But this thing will throw a nasty false set. And there is that high pin in the back. And there is definitely some nasty counter milling in this as well. There is a dead core spot that this thing kicks out and you have to float pick it out of there. I'm hoping to not trigger that personally. I think I can because I think I know the lock now. But that is the question. Question is, are we there yet? I don't think we are. Overset something.
start over. I think I threw something into an overset. Hate it when I get a deep pick stuck in a lock. Putting it in a place where it shouldn't be. that deep fall set where I do think I hit that over milling or other milling. Just have that last back pin. But I can only get on it. There we go. That's what I thought. Okay. bit so I can actually see under the camera. We do have a key. Oh, these GG springs are so, so... There we go. 
<laughs> ah, those springs are so tough. Oh. <laughs> that could be a problem. Nope. Turn it the wrong direction. So let's do this. I don't want to go in. Catching on something in there. I believe there's gins in this. There we go. There we go. In there nicely. Let me do this the way I'm handed. Pins up, pins up. And this one will come out. We probably have Get the camera out of the way for a second. I believe something is a little bit spread out on the plug itself so it's catching right at the back of the cylinder and it's gonna drag through Don't try this at home, kids. There we go, there we go. Hoo -hoo. There is some plug work done. Come here, Mr. Shim. Okay, let's get back down. Into this. There are definitely some mods. There's some undercutting on number two. And everything is pretty low in there. And pins come wobbling out. And we can see that back pin has a reduced diameter. A couple of them have reduced diameters. We've lost the shear, that's where we're clicking on number four. And we're below shear on number three. So let's see what the pins are. Oh, bottom pin and a ball bearing. I, that ball bearing was on the bottom. And there's a bottom pin. I think this thing's been put back together wrong. I don't know. Oh, and another ball bearing on top of a pin. <laughs> and standard. And those others are, oh, we're out of camera. I'm sorry, guys. A standard on four, a ball bearing and a standard again. Oh, <laughs> jeez. That's why it felt like everything was running off the pigs. So then we have this extra mod. Definitely have a nice undercut in that this is what throws off the long. There's a light, I think that's probably GG undercut on a couple of spots on that lip. Nope. I don't have, there they are, regular tweezers. I don't like those other new ones. And we have a spool on number one. Big Gigi. 
This thing should have thrown out a bigger set, And just kind of like a serrated one. But I'll catch on that counter milling. And a big spool. I did not trigger those. I had a false set in this, but it was never more than, you know, I had my mark there. I never had, this could trigger like a huge leaning false set. And that one is a thread a screw in number six. And I see threading on that one too. And that is a serrated driver. Come out of there, play nice. There we go. And a standard in Number four. Set those aside. Let's see if we can. Get things into focus. Threading on two and probably three. Looks like clean on the others, but we will confirm that. Once we turn off that brilliant flashlight. Clean on one, two, three, four. Threading on five and six. So this is Ashley Gavin's rough ass, number 17. These are the pins. We have spool on one, ball bearings underneath drive standard pins on one, two, and five. A serrated top pin in number two. Big homemade spool in number three. Um, actually, you know what? We have to pull that one out. I that. That might be standard, but I want to look at that one closer. A serrated top in number five and a screw acting as number six. But I wanted to see. No. Okay. I thought I saw that it might be like lopsided, had the sides cut off. Or something like that. Let's populate it and see what we get to see. Yeah. I have to pull up quite a bit on that. <laughs> Over half of that pin. These little ball bearings are going to be fun to put back in. Especially that wobbling on top of the tip. And... That one gets it to a, a serrated, almost like a spool set. That one we know. And this should have, there's that. That should have thrown a bigger false set to where it could almost lay down one way or the other, but I didn't get that big of a false set. So I wonder if maybe like one, which is not a very high lift. Was our, you know, if you don't play with it, it sits just in there, but it would lay down as well too, because I mean, <laughs> it spins at that point. And I wonder, we're actually getting anything on 
Oh yeah, definitely. Gigi's fun because even a high lift or a low, very little lift pin, yeah, that's gonna catch right into that. Oh, that's some actually nice counter milling. I'm not gonna try and hold the plug up with that. But this is Ashley Gavin's number 17 rough ass. Fun lock. Once you learn it though, it succumbs quite easily, which I had a lot of fun with that. And I'm just gonna put these pins back. One more time. And there we go, Pickaholics. Hope you have a good evening. We'll see you on the next one.